some breaking news last night. Big breaking news. Bigger, perhaps, than Soapy Feet. Perhaps. Why don't they call it? I guess I guess the new name for the site is Caps Friendly. Yeah. No, more like Cap Sellout. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Cap Friendly. You know what I mean? Every internet user who doesn't know how things work. Cap Friendly uh, has reportedly been sold to the Washington Capitals. Caps Friendly. You get it? Mm -hmm. You see? Yes. Uh, now, this is not the first time this has happened. If you remember, our good friend uh, Tom Parashka ran a site called General Fanager. Yeah. And he <laughs> sold it to the Vegas Golden Knights. And what happened? What happened? What happened? Jeans. Stanley Cup finals appearances in six years. One of them was a win. Instant success. I saw so many people go, why would the Capitals do this as if the Vegas Golden Knights aren't currently Stanley Cup champions? Yeah. <laughs> like, guys, come on. Come on. I know. Listen, I'm going to miss the site, too. I'm sad about it. Mm -hmm. Happy for their success. Yeah. Well, and and I I I, I everyone I, cheers for your success until you actually find it. You well, know. Well, I I was really surprised by the amount of people who are like, I don't like this. Like, if if I would never sell. Okay. Yeah, you would. <laughs> well, yeah, you would. And even if you wouldn't, and you would have done it for less. Here's here's the thing. Even if you wouldn't, just be happy for people. They can make their own Impossible. decisions, and they don't really need your input on that. I'm I'm those guys that ran that site. Uh, we we saw them in Nashville. We've been in touch with the Cap Friendly guys for years, and they are mm -hmm. kind, professional, helpful. They are on the ball all the time. And whenever we reached out, they've always been there to help. So for me, I'm thrilled for them, and and they deserve all this success. And good look at them; they get to go work for an NHL team. Well, and you know what what they used to do? Because remember, they wouldn't get uh, they weren't able to get credentials. Yes, so I they do would remember that. They would show up to the draft, the three of them, I think, in full suits, blazing hot Nashville, <laughs> remember? Mm -hmm. And uh, they would all show up at their laptops and they would update the site from their seats that they bought in their suits. Yeah. And they were at our event last year, too. Yes, they were. They were in the corner. Very nice guys. Yes, but they, they barely talked to anybody because they were on their phones the whole time trying to update the site. They were. Yeah. Which was no, amazing. It was always, it's like, okay, we have 10 minutes set aside to socialize and speak to other humans. Yeah. And then they would go right back to running one of the most important websites in hockey. And and that's, that's why people are sad about it. Well, I think, I think it's okay to be sad about that and also not say you bunch of sellouts. <laughs> like, yeah, just, just man, let people do something good. That's good for them. And you know what? There are other sites available and we'll shout out uh, our friends at Puckpedia. Who yeah. are another? That's another great site that you can go to. That uh, not for sale, from what I understand. So well, <laughs> and and you know what's funny? They I think they used to be a part of the Nation Network, and now they're independent again. Or I, I don't really understand how all that worked. But you know what I'm seeing is is some people saying it's not as Puckpedia is not as user friendly or whatever uh, as Cap friendly. You know. That was the people forget, and maybe it's because you, you got to talk to us olds, but that was the complaint when uh, Cap Geek uh, stopped operating, and then General Manager took over. Well, Cap Geek was the original one. It was. I want to say it was. It was Cap Geek that was the original. Then General Manager and a really early stage Cap Friendly mm -hmm. were going at it, and I remember people being like, "Well, neither of these sites are even usable," and. I don't uh, know. I didn't mind them. Well, they got better. No, they were good, mm -hmm. but we were used to Cap Geek, which at the time was a preposterous standard. And and who? Uh, what was the story there? Matthew West, right? Um, unfortunately, passed away. And uh, you know, it was it was the the first site of its kind that I can th that I can think of. There were others talking about, oh, I ran something like this or I started this in 2006 or whatever. I, I wasn't familiar with it. It was the first big site of its kind um, with the salary cap. General Fanager took over, went away, uh, and that was messy too because supposedly they were going to go to the Nation Network and then they ended up going to Vegas, a decision that I don't think they regret on no. account of they have a Stanley Cup ring now. Um, cap Friendly took over. Dominic Zrim, um, who uh, founded, I believe, Cap Friendly, worked for uh, the Sharks, worked for the Blackhawks. Um, I assume they're going to work for the Capitals now. I, I don't know how that works, actually, because the last few years, to my understanding, while doing work for those two NHL teams, uh, they haven't been running the site. It's been the Davis brothers. Yes. Um, 
So, but it might still be an investment or whatever, and we don't know. Might still be. I have no idea. And now, um, we still have Puckpedia. Yeah. So, I mean, none of this would be a problem if the NHL just did it themselves. Well, that would be a problem. Yeah. Because the NHL, uh, the NHL doesn't. I think it's this type of site can only really exist outside of NHL.com. Would it be because illegal? it would require? Well, I don't know if it would be illegal. It probably, yeah. Salary disclosure is probably not something that they're technically allowed to do. I mean, it's like but, Sportsnet listing. But you're you're talking about on the website. One of, one of the things that like NHL.com can't do is they can't break news. They have to wait until the team has announced it and then they can write a story yeah. about it. So, um, you know, a team like the Islanders, you just get a bunch of dashes like you wouldn't get anything. You need you need reporters on it. You need it to be private uh, or part of a larger network mm -hmm. um, because the NHL has no impetus to make a site like that good or work or be updated. Right. Whereas a site where which can draw a bunch of clicks the way Cap Friendly and Puckpedia do. Um, have the opportunity to make some money off of that. Where the right. NHL, they don't. That's not their core business. They don't care. Like, look at NHL Edge. It's kind of useful. Kind of. It's it's fine. But getting it's, better. It's getting time. better. But it's not what it needs to be. And again, that's not the NHL's focus. You know, Adam. One of us has been very quiet, and one of us knows. I think perhaps more than two of us. Jesse Blake. Uh, <laughs> you just recorded the CJ show yeah. with CJ and I believe yeah. this was a topic. Yeah, it was. And it's, it was uh, CJ's reaction to it was, I think the appropriate one in that he's just happy. For I that. hate those guys. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you know, I think it was, it's, it's like, Hey, we can, this has happened several times with the hockey community where we lose the cap site that we had. This is, this is just Groundhog Day again. And you're really happy for all the guys at Cap Friendly who get, I assume, uh, some sort of payday and they get to continue working in the NHL. Like they get to go work for an NHL team, which is awesome. But Jesse, so, how does this affect the Meafs? What is that? The me. So the, the, <laughs> instead of the Leafs. Oh. It's me. Maybe well, here I'll do, I'll tell you what I would do if I was in that, you're not in that situation. I was. I asked CJ. I was like, a lot of the outrage is people who think there's something nefarious done on the side of the oh Capitals, God. and it's very, it's very cut and dry. Like this is a, a shrewd business decision by Ted Leonsis and and Co. Like I'm not, I haven't been a fan of how he's handled any of the arena situations in Washington at all. But he's been a very good businessman in the media space over the last uh, his decades long run as a very successful businessman and this is just another competitive advantage that he saw and apparently there were other suitors on on for cap friendly and they came to the table with some sort of the best offer and the best situation and behind the scenes cap friendly was working with nhl teams there were the uh, like certain apis like they they link to back ends of teams operations in in their and that's how you make cities. money right yeah so that they, they did work with nhl teams and the reason this came to light that when it got leaked is because they terminated those contracts. So uh, the teams that were working with Cat Friendly, they got the notice that, hey, the Washington's going to buy all of this information and that's going to be shut down. So this kind of got leaked out. And for them, it's just, hey, hey, good for you. We'll all move on as a hockey collective uh, public and we'll find some other way to get salary information. But right now, good move by the Washington Capitals, shutting it down for everybody else, not having the ability to access it publicly. We've seen lots of screenshots of there's one of is it Dorian who's in his office in, in Ottawa? There's a screenshot of him yep. using cap friendly yep. on a, like a, on a team photo, which is just cool because you know how far that site reached. And and now the Washington Capitals did something smart and they gain all the people there and the information. So kudos to them and kudos to the cat friendly guys for a cool moment yeah uh puckpedia is now gonna get a pretty big windfall yeah excited for them yeah 24 25 is gonna be a big year for them yeah and if you're not happy like you i think you nailed it with like hey cap friendly wasn't always the infrastructure that we it is right now they mm. built to this moment yeah. and puckpedia is maybe it's not cap friendly right now but now with all of this new traffic they can build to that. And all of that new traffic is going to drive revenues for them. And they can add more features that you want. And it'll be fine. Like, it's, we're it's, all going to survive this. It's Speaking all right. of new features, Cap Friendly, we discussed, hey, it'd be good if your site had this. It'd be good if your site had that. And then they added it to the site, which means if the Caps win the Stanley Cup, I get a ring. All right? What? I want one.
Yeah, because I contributed like 0.000001% to that website. Mm. So I want to ring. Mm. That's how it works. Mm. I'm like the black ace who plays five AHL games and gets to hoist the cup. <laughs> That's me. I think I, I want to get on the ice. I think uh, I think a big congratulations go to those guys and, and for how hard they've worked and how much understanding they brought to like one of the things that I think, you know, if you have a reasonable reaction to this, uh, one of the things I think you're thinking, which is, uh, man, I, they really helped me understand this cap, which is not easy to understand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They did videos, they did educational tutorials and things like that, that, you know, if you wanted to, you could look all that up. And I wonder if that all goes away too, probably. And yeah, the site's shutting down. Yeah. So yeah. like what the YouTube videos though, and stuff like that after least, free agency. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's, that's one thing we should note too. They've committed to keeping the site open for draft and free agency. So it doesn't officially shut down until July 5th. So you have until then, uh, to access cap. Them. I saw some people go, Oh, that's good of them. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Well, also <laughs> like, the contract probably, away? their contracts probably go until after draft free agency as well. With whatever teams that they're, that are using their service, they can't just, terminate it like uh, that there's probably a latency period like here's a 30-day termination but the public gets it too yeah i don't give a damn about the team well i know yeah. but that's probably the main public yeah but they could have right. shut it down for the public is the point like they, yeah they, they didn't oh there's no contract with the public like they could have kept it open for the teams and everything but the fact that they left it open for the public is kind of cool so i understand there is cap friendly premium and some people were griping about that i i don't know enough about it um but uh you know hopefully everyone involved um, is made whole or whatever is mm -hmm. left satisfied. I mean, I mean, I guess you're not going to be satisfied because it's going away, but good for them, man. Like it's, it's just, you know, Matt West, when he started cap geek, um, was solo, um, cap friendly. I don't know enough about their humble beginnings, but like they grinded for a number of years before the site was like really relevant. And Tom Paraska, um, who won a Stanley cup with the Vegas golden Knights, we had him on our show in like 2015 or 16. He began the site to teach himself how to code. That's these cool. Are, these are all like. That's very cool. Great triumphs of hockey fans. Like these are fans mm -hmm. um, who started something and helped uh, the rest of us. Um, you know, this is why I keep yelling about the league and I wish the league would do more. Um these are fans helping fans. Yes. Well, and I think uh, uh, I think it's it's uh, again we we congratulate them and don't worry. There's other sites doing it too. And as businesses grow, it's funny they don't just start at ten out of ten great. <laughs> they have to yeah. build up, and sometimes you have to go back down, and then you have to build up even more, and then you have like that's how it works. I, I wonder what this means for salary swish. Which I oh, think they, they just started this season. It's well, like cap if they're good at basketball. that. I mean, I mean, isn't it funny that Leonsis owns the the Washington Wizards? Oh, yeah. Oh, like, oh, if I if I'm that. him, I I want them both in the deal. But who knows if that's like a different arm, you know? And they leave that open, and eventually they sell it to like the Raptors. You know? No idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh, I don't know. That's a very good question. I wonder what happens to it. Because it, it doesn't have the notoriety that Cap Friendly has in the NHL space. It hasn't gained traction yet in the NBA space. So we'll see if it lives past uh, this date. 